there is a certain madness in launching into something like this and you could understand why in 300 years the very few eccentric people who've tried it uh, you know sort of fallen by the wayside because it's it, it's just you know, it's too much really but that's that's part of the appeal the fact that it's such a huge challenge I think has motivated both of us to sort of just we have to we have to succeed to make this happen I remember the first time that I sort of held, you know, a sort of a large bunch of silk. I had a, this sort of out-of-body experience. I couldn't believe um, how soft and light and, and yet, you know, incredibly strong this material is. It feels unlike anything that I had ever touched before. What you see here is this fantastic yellow color, which is the golden orb. The product that comes from the spider. Uh, we haven't done anything to this. This is the this is the entirely natural produce from the spider. It's not only the, the the spider in Madagascar. The golden orb family of spiders all produce this wonderful colour, which is obviously the name, the, the, the sort of naming of it. It is extraordinary, and it is a, it is as you can see a fantastic thing. This cape has taken us about three years and about 1.2 million spiders. The spiders are collected in the wild um, and they're collected individually uh, and they're kept alive, they're harnessed and then milked and they produce between 30 and 50 meters of, of thread um, and then that takes about 25 minutes and then they're released back into nature. Actually, collecting the spiders, there are you know maybe 60, 70, 80 people every day looking for spiders. So it's a lot of people out there um, involved in this story. Um, and then the the actual the whole process of, of uh, extracting, silking or milking, whatever you like to say, for extracting the silk, there are you know, quite a number of people involved with just that process, and a, you know, another group of people involved with transforming the silk in. Uh, and then weavers and embroiderers and so all together it's a, it's, a, it's a large number of people involved, yeah. And very hands-on, yes, just to say, very hands-on. This is the invisibility cloak, it really literally, you cannot feel it. I mean, it is quite extraordinary. I think one of the reasons for that is if you get a cross-section of the silk, you can see it's, at, it's perfectly cylindrical, the silk. Unlike uh, the Chinese silkworm, which has got this sort of irregular, triangular cross-section. So, I mean, the, the choice of a cape was a sort of, because it's, a, it's sort of a familiar garment, but at the same time, it's slightly unfamiliar because people, not many people actually put capes on. In early childhood, you read nursery rhymes and other things which have spiders in. Um, there is something of, of, the, of, of that fairy tale aspect to, to, uh, to this, I think. There's a sort of somehow in the link of the sort of comic book heroes, the superheroes, you know, the sort of the cape and the Spider Man, the Batman, I don't know. There's some, there is a sort of amusing lull in that direction. But then there's also, I think, there's, a, there's an element of the sort of ritual about it, which was, it was definitely, I, I felt that was important in this. So, you know, it really, it's sort of like a dalmatic or chasuble of a sort of priestly robe of some sort. I, it, you know, it lent itself to, to one's imagination in, in, in terms of rites and rituals. And also just on a practical level, um, you know, it's a large surface which you can then use like a canvas. You've got a, on the back, you, you know, there's a very big surface which you can then decorate and, and adorn or do whatever you like with. The spider in a lot of a lot of mythology and a lot of uh, cultures, sort of ancient cultures, saw they saw the spider as a sort of a, as the creator of the cosmos. Um, so part of the idea is the spider creating like a paradise, which is the garden represented by the flowering. So there are lots of little things like that which have inspired what you see here. When we saw the cape on a human, on a beautiful model for the first time, I think it was it was an amazing amazing experience and it was it, it draped beautifully and it it transformed the entire room um, that she was in and it was very it was a very special moment and, and especially you know here at the Lina. Seeing it uh, from an atelier workshop sort of um, 
context uh, and seeing it in the beautiful room here in the V&A uh, with all the, you know, the gilding and the, everything else. Um, it was a, it was a strange leap from from you know one one you know the the making to the to the appreciation and it was a it's a I mean it was a joy really really a huge joy to see that it was a special moment it really was. There is really a fairy tale aspect to this, um, and uh, seeing it on the model made me. I mean I think we both felt it did feel like a sort of something from you know turning the pages in a fairy tale. This isn't about fashion, this is about creating something extraordinary uh, and magical. It's, it's about something uh, which is unique. I think you can, it's not a, we're not using that word glibly. It is, you know, there is no collection in the world that has something like this made from spider. There isn't, there's nothing. Um, so it is a, it is a, it is a one-off thing and, uh, and I think in many ways we're privileged to, to have been part of, you know, something which you can say no one else has done it. That was, I think, a lot of, uh inspiration behind starting this thing to begin with. I think we both realize that when you have an opportunity to do something completely unique that's never been done, um, it's, a, it's a shame not to try it. And I think that's the spirit in which we, yeah. we, we got started eight years ago. So two, two creations in eight years is not a sort of uh, an industry. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a labor of love, really, to do something like this.